Starlet Young, and I'm Charles Bowers' eldest daughter. Can you spell your first name for me? C H A R L O T T E. Okay, and your last name is spelled Y O U N G? Yes, yeah. it is. All right, Mrs. Young, why don't you tell me what you would like me to know? Okay. Our parents were members of the greatest generation, which is a term coined by NBC News anchor Tom Brokaw. Some of the characteristics include personal responsibility, humility, a strong work ethic, and prudent saving. They instilled these same characteristics in their children, including doing the right thing and be grateful for what we had. A penny saved is a penny earned. If we wanted something, we had to work for it. Nothing was handed to us. We've all had our differences with our dad at times. Who doesn't? But we always managed to work things out. We understood that he was still grieving the loss of our mother. Ms. Young, I'm going to just ask you to slow down a little bit when we read. Okay. to go a little bit faster. Okay. Thank you. We understood that he was still grieving the loss of our mother, his wife of 65 years, and we saw how her death affected him and us as we slowly watched her decline to the effects of Alzheimer's disease which took her life. We had told our dad that we had concerns about his relationship with the defendant and that he should not share his financial status with her or let her near his money. We could see the defendant for what she was. After the initial police report in February of 2018, the defendant wormed her way back, telling him it was a big mistake and continued to take advantage of his kindness to her. He trusted her to pay the bills, just like our mom did. He claimed the defendant was working and going to school. There were also several times after that when family members did stop by and were occasionally allowed in the house. Well, there were bunk beds set up in one room and another room was furnished with bedroom furniture he had purchased. The drawers were always empty and there were no personal effects anywhere. No toothbrushes, hairbrushes, makeup on the dresser or in the bathroom. No special soaps, lotions, creams, hair dryers. Dad always said the defendant was going to move in, but the furniture was just for show. The defendant had no plans on living with our dad. The fact that she never lived there can also be verified with his various neighbors. Once our dad threw the defendant out, he closed the bank accounts and even tried to have the deed to the house changed back to no avail. His actions at that time showed that he finally saw the defendant for what she was and if his deposition would have been taken in a timely manner, to, manner, we would not be here today defending him. Once our dad got over the shock of what happened, he was depressed, embarrassed, and humiliated. Ironically, we recently found out that on September 4th, 2018, just a few days after being confronted by our dad, the defendant and Dan Schultz applied for a marriage license. The defendant took more than our dad's money and physical assets. She took our dad, whose health was failing, from us during that time. Your Honor, the defendant's past history with the legal system speaks for itself. She has had several prior probation violations and community sanction violations. She was on probation for the same thing when she, was being, when she began funneling our dad's money. She has no regard for the law. When the defendant, a repeat offender, was found guilty of the various charges, we asked that she be given the maximum sentence allowed for each charge and that they be served consecutively with no chance for parole so that no other elderly person or their family member becomes one of her victims and has to go through what we have been through, both emotionally and financially. And thank you for hearing me. Thank you, Mrs. Young. Mr. Corral, is there anybody else who wishes to address the court? Yeah, thank you. I believe uh, Deborah Sharon also. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Mrs. Sheridan. Um, I'm going to spell your name D E B O R A H. 
S H E R I D A N. Did yes. I get that right? Yes. All right, Mr. Sheridan. Your Honor, it is with great sadness that we are here today. I'm going to tell you the same thing I told your sister. Just go a lot slower. Okay. I can already tell you're going a little fast. I'm nervous. I understand. Take a deep breath and take your time. Okay. Your Honor, it is with great sadness we are here today without our father. Latasha, you've said on many occasions you only wanted a chance with our family so we could see who you really were. Yet even with such a bold statement and under the circumstances, your only effort was in fact quite the opposite and your actions only proved our suspicions accurate. We watched you work hard at driving a wedge between my dad and his family. He moved in, you, mo you moved in quickly to befriend him and to gain control of every aspect of his life. You alienated him from longtime friends, friends who've known him for longer than you've been alive. You made him believe his family who loved him very much was out to get him and that we only wanted his money, when in fact everything you tried to make him believe of us was actually indicative of what you were doing and what you had set out to do from the very beginning. If you remember, your first meeting with my daughter back in September of 2017, when you were invited to my daughter's home for the weekly family dinner, Opportunity presented itself for the two of you to get to know one another. There was a particular conversation that took place. If, re if you recall, you sat in her home, in her living room, and made the comment how, quote, you knew what this looked like. When Jen asked you to elaborate, you then stated how, quote, you know a much older man with a much younger woman is usually viewed as a gold digger and only wanting money. Since you had brought up what she was thinking all along, she then asked point blank what you meant and what your intentions were with him, to which you then told her, I only wanted a friendship with him and how I wouldn't take a dollar from him when he offered or not. When in fact you lied straight to her face because shortly thereafter I asked my daughter if my dad gave her money, to which at that time he did not. After further investigation by our family, we learned you were already in his wallet by having a boob job and dental implants paid by him. Which keep in mind, Your Honor, this woman only knew my father only a matter of a week at this point. She was merely a stranger and a predator. The defendant acted quickly when it came to interjecting herself into every facet of my dad's life. She moved into his life like a whirlwind and began deceiving and manipulating him from the very first day. The defendant took every advantage of my father and of, his, and of his failing health, his kindnesses, and of his vulnerabilities. This woman preyed on him like an animal just as she preyed on the others she's been convicted of doing the same thing to. Latasha, your actions and lack of accountability only show your true character, sheer selfishness, and the desire to only fulfill your own selfless needs. You knew from the very beginning what it was you had set out to do, you viewed him as someone to prey upon because to you he was an easy target. What we have all seen of this woman do is nothing short of repulsive. The defendant sits here smug showing zero remorse. The only tears she has shed are for herself and the time in which she is facing in prison for the convictions against her. All of the defendant's actions still to this day have continued to harass and further victimize our family. The only thing the defendant didn't rob our family of is our bond. Our family's love for one another and our bond is what's given us the strength we have needed to see this through in our father, grandfather's name. Your Honor, we sit here today learning what this woman has done is only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to fleecing the elderly. We've learned that this is a way of life for people like the defendant and since she's never been employed, we believe that this is a way of life for her too. She preyed on my dad in his final years of life just as she has others. We believe she is likely to reoffend due to her being on probation at the time of these crimes took place. We feel the systems set in place to protect our elderly are poorly inadequate and had failed us several times. We are asking that the defendant be given the maximum sentences for her crimes and served consecutively. We ask this of you, Your Honor, since you are the last layer of protection we and others have from this woman and her actions. We ask for the max, not because of any retaliatory actions, 
but because we see it as fair and want to see she be taught a harsh lesson for her crimes and in hopes that no other person or family has to go through what we have. We all thank you for your consideration of your recommendations and for your gracious time spent deliberating. Please don't fail my father in our family's final attempt at justice. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so anyone here is making comments, this is an open courtroom, but I reserve all rights to exclude you. I don't want to do that, but if you feel like you can't maintain silence during this process, you're going to need to excuse yourself. Or I'll have to excuse I'm you. fine. It's just hard listening to lies. Okay. If you can't keep your opinions to yourself, you're going to need to leave. Mr. Kerbel, anybody else wish to speak on behalf of the victim's family? Uh, no, Your Honor. What would you like to place on the record? Your Honor, thank you. 